Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Tuesday the 16th of December 2025. It's a long one today, we've got lots of rainfall, lots of shower activity, some heavy rainfall around Christmas, a potential tropical low and a couple of tropical cyclones to talk about but let's get stuck straight into things with our Queensland outlook. There's a lot of low pressure around Queensland right now including some air coming in from the Pacific Ocean in two parts of the state that I'm very interested in. That's going to be sparking heavy rainfall throughout the course of today on the Sunshine Coast and some potential heavy to local intense rainfall tonight in far northern Queensland as well before around Christmas time we get a surge of massive moisture coming in through the north Queensland coastline that could give us a couple of hundred millimetres of rainfall around Christmas Day and Boxing Day. Let's talk about the Sunshine Coast right now considering it is our more current threat. Now whilst we're not talking about severe thunderstorms we've still got to talk about southeastern Queensland. Overnight we've seen a convergent zone develop around Noosa in fact right on top of Noosa and it's funneled in some incredible rainfall accumulations. Now just for context here a convergent zone is where we see winds converging along a line and that is in this case here winds coming out of the northeast carrying a lot of moisture and humidity and that southeastly change with those cooler dry winds coming out of the southeast all converging along this line that's basically right over the top of Noosa and that's created some incredible shower and thunderstorm activity that we've seen overnight. Now just as well for a little bit of context, Maroochydore has had 14 millimetres of rainfall in the past 24 hours. Nothing special there, but Noosa or Tuantin has had 170 millimetres of rainfall and that is how localised convergence zone rainfall can be. 10 times the amount of rainfall, just 100 k's up the coast. Incredible, incredible stuff and as you can see it's still continuing to pile in. This is a look at our radar loop over the past six hours. Good thunderstorm and shower activity, and it's been very persistent over the past six hours as well for these locations. Heavy to locally intense rainfall, and I imagine there's some pretty big puddles currently being uh, created around the Noosa and the Tuantan area, heading inland towards K uh, Kandanga, uh, and even as far north as Gympie as well, a couple of showers have been present up there. Now, this rainfall is slowly going to push up a little bit further to the north throughout the course of the, uh, this morning into this afternoon. We will see this rainfall potentially make it as far inland and as far north as Gympie, but Expect moderate to locally heavy rainfall in this black circle here towards the north of Noosa, up towards Tin Can Bay and Rainbow Beach. I don't expect the rainfall to make it as far north as the Fraser Coast, though. I do reckon it's going to just kind of hold itself in this black outline here and not move around too much more further north uh, once this moisture does begin to really ease off and pull through. It's been an interesting one. We've also had some good converging thunderstorms out towards the west of Toowoomba and some heavy to locally intense rainfall with force between 50 to 70 millimetres around the Dolby, Milmerin and Cecil Plains area overnight. In this other black outline, Brisbane and the Gold Coast have, as expected, miss out. And we're not talking about rainfall or showers or thunderstorms coming through for those locations at all throughout the remainder of today. And in fact, throughout the remainder of this week, it's going to be a pretty calm one. We're seeing this moisture continue to surge in towards central Queensland and widespread shower and thunderstorm activity, including some potentially severe if not dangerous thunderstorm activity is expected around Roma uh, here through the Warrego forecast district right down to the New South Wales Queensland border towards the west of Gundawindi down to Moree with lots of lightning activity forecast later this afternoon into this evening in this part of uh, Queensland with this secondary black circle down here. However you can see southeast Queensland remaining dry apart from a few showers still coming through for the Sunshine Coast and this is the story for the remainder of the week. Showers, thunderstorms, some scattered severe thunderstorm activity is expected to keep on um, occurring through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and this gets out progressively further towards the west as we get out towards especially Thursday and Friday with some potentially strong if not dangerous thunderstorms expected out towards southwestern Queensland with locally destructive winds on Thursday out towards Friday before this rainfall and shower activity does begin to ease off. We could see some scattered thunderstorm activity through New South Wales on Saturday and Sunday and potentially severe thunderstorm activity through parts of southeastern New South Wales and Victoria on Saturday and Sunday as well but at this point in time I wouldn't be given that too much airtime considering it is uh, still a little bit uncertain and details are going to change on the forecast modelling. The next chance for thunderstorm activity is going to be in another build-up of moisture that's going to be occurring through southeastern Queensland around it Monday and Tuesday next week. We are expecting some substantial rainfall accumulations as a result of some of these thunderstorms. If they can get themselves going, they're going to be slow-moving, heavy rainfall dumpers like what we saw yesterday through parts of the Burnett Forecast District. And then the low-pressure systems start, and I'll get to this in just a second, uh, but we're going to be talking about a lot of rainfall pouring through into Queensland, especially through central and northern Queensland. What we're going to be seeing is a broad area of low pressure develop somewhere around the Gulf of Carpentaria or Arnhem Land into the top end of the Northern Territory. That's going to push into the Northern Territory, but it's going to pull in a lot of moisture here from the Coral Sea. And all of this moisture coming in from the Coral Sea, converging up with the moisture from this low pressure system as it moves down towards the southeast, is going to result in showers, thunderstorms, and rainfall through a very wide expanse of Northern Australia. This will, this will include Queensland, the Northern Territory, and parts of Western Australia. 
Australia in the run-up towards Christmas before this rainfall drags itself out exclusively into Queensland around the 23rd or the 24th of December and sparking a wet Christmas period across Queensland, particularly across the northern and the central coastlines. Now, the forecast has actually changed very little from yesterday. In fact, the only notable changes in the forecast is with other forecast models now coming on board and becoming congruent with our European Centre for Meteorology, uh, our ECMWF forecast modelling here with that heavy rainfall being localised around the north and the central Queensland coastline in this black outline here. And that's really good news for the forecast. It means that it's starting to become a little bit more certain and we can rely on this picture that we've been sharing for the last couple of days now. Seven-day rainfall accumulations between the 27th out of the 28th, uh, the 22nd out to the 28th of December inclusive are uh, looking pretty significant now for a number of locations. You can see a few spots are expecting up towards 400, even 500 millimetres, with the heaviest rainfall accumulations expected into northwestern Queensland, into the Gulf Country, and parts of the Northern Territory around Robinson River and Boralula. We'll see some significant rainfall accumulations as well through parts of the North Queensland coastline with this moisture coming in uh, from the Coral Sea. That will likely result in convergence zones similar to what we're going to be seeing tonight on the North Queensland coastline and similar to what we saw last night on the Sunshine Coast, just in a much more widespread and significant capacity with a lot more heavier rainfall. And that's a very good point to note, is that around Christmas time, when this rainfall is expected to be at its heaviest, we're going to be seeing this low pressure trough set itself up just offshore from the Queensland coastline, and that's going to cause a whole bunch of convergence zone uh, rainfall to develop, and that's where we're going to be seeing our heaviest rainfall accumulations right now. As expected, there is going to be some chopping and changing with the forecast, and one of the changes that we've seen today is dragging this rainfall further south. Generally speaking, I do expect Brisbane and the Gold Coast to be drier, particularly around the Christmas period, just considering the fact that this rainfall is going to be more tropical in nature. However, with the sea temperatures that we're currently seeing dragging down in the East Australian current, I mean, we've got 26 degree waters offshore from the Fraser Coast, which is February type temperatures, not mid-December. We could be seeing some substantial rainfall accumulations, especially for the Sunshine Coast. Definitely a feature that I want to be watching right now. Now, in terms of what to expect, Christmas and in towards our Boxing Day and Christmas Eve periods, we are expecting some substantial rainfall accumulations as a result of this area of low pressure. Where the heaviest rainfall is going to be is still unknown, but generally speaking, northwestern Queensland and the northern and central coastline between Rockhampton up towards Townsville. That is right now where the heaviest rainfall is expected, and that is in line with other major forecast models' pictures. However, we are seeing a bit of a southerly trend. This could mean some heavier rainfall than originally expected for Brisbane and the Gold Coast, so it's still a very much watch and act type forecast. And I stand firm on having some answers by this weekend. Probably by Friday or Saturday, we'll have some rock-solid answers as to how much rainfall certain locations can be expecting, so make sure you do stay tuned for the secondary update on that coming out Thursday or Friday, just purely on this rainfall event for the Queensland side of things. Now, I did mention earlier in the forecast update that we are going to be talking about some kind of rainfall uh, event up in towards far northern Queensland tonight. This is definitely a feature that's going to get overlooked considering it is on some very high resolution forecast models. But what we're going to be seeing is mid-level moisture moving in towards the north Queensland coastline and likely a convergent zone or two developing across either the Cassidy Coast or the Daintree Rainforest. And convective forecast modeling is very fond of some significant rainfall accumulations piping up for parts of the Cassidy Coast and the Daintree Rainforest, especially for the Cassidy Coast in in fact, that's where the heaviest rainfall is currently expected. And this is a look at three hour simulated rainfall accumulation. So if we have a look at some of these numbers here, really starting to get quite significant around the Castro Coast. Even Cairns could be picking up some significant rainfall accumulations. And because this is going to be coming out of the east instead of usually where these events coming out of the southeast and Cairns ends up being protected by the Yarraba Peninsula, Cairns is actually in a hot seat to pick up some rather significant rainfall accumulations. Now the convective forecast modeling generally does really well with these sort of weather events, particularly on the rainfall forecast and rainfall accumulation accumulation side of things because it's well because far north Queensland is so kind of compact it's a small area with intricate mountains and valleys the convective forecast modeling is generally the only forecast modeling that can accurately predict rainfall and its interaction with those mountain valleys and uh, troughs and whatnot uh, and that's why I use it so uh, frequently for far northern Queensland, you can see some significant rainfall accumulations are on the forecast. Our heaviest falls, of course, in our usual spots, Berlin and Kerr, around Fishery Falls, Innisfail, down around the Johnston River catchment, the uh, Innisfail area. Uh, like I said, significant rainfall accumulations, all a possibility in those areas. And if we do see convergent zone rainfall developing, a small slither of coastline, particularly somewhere between kind of, uh, I'd say, Gordon Vale down towards Tully, particularly around the Innisfail area and around Johnston, could be seeing some significant rainfall accumulations tonight. This may also throw cans into 
the mix of some heavy rainfall and it could also throw the danger rainforest into 100 millimeters of rainfall as well. Generally speaking, I'm expecting falls between 20 to 60 millimeters with scattered rainfall accumulations to 200 millimeters possible. And we may see a 300 millimeter dump at one or two spots that's far north Queensland and we're talking about at the end of the day in December. And when we see rainfall like this come on, we basically have to go for the worst case scenario, considering that the worst case scenario nine times out of 10 is the amount of rainfall that one or two of these spots are going to pick up. I'll have a second update on this later this afternoon. I'll have more information over on the Facebook page as well. So for those up in far northern Queensland, stay tuned for that and I'll have some more information later today as this rainfall does begin to build offshore. But you can see it's already looking rather turbulent here out into the Coral Sea. Lots of cloud and shower activity already beginning to build and with thunderstorms already firing into the Gulf of Carpentaria, you can tell it's a turbulent and a moist picture across northern Queensland. Let's touch on our tropical cyclone situation right now. Two systems of note. We've got tropical cyclone Bakung still holding on to category two status here, tracking off towards the Cocos Keeling Islands, but it's expected to perish before it gets north of the Cocos Keeling Islands. We've also got tropical low 05 U here, which is a tropical low in a very unfavorable environment, but it is still trying to make something of itself with some convection and shower activity firing around its center. This one is expected to track south of the Cocos Keeling Islands and Christmas Island over the next week and potentially get itself up towards severe tropical cyclone status forecast modeling has been very fond of this system over the last couple of days and after this weekend into early next week we are likely to see some substantial intensification from this system here the ECMW forecast model which is one that we can take with a pinch of salt sometimes especially on a tropical cyclone forecast is actually calling for a direct hit on the Cocos Keeling Islands and you can see here wind gusts approaching 70 knots on the Cocos Keeling Islands and that is uh, very very difficult a tropical cyclone landfall on the Cocos Keeling Islands or on Christmas Island that's like needle in a haystack type rare very difficult to pinpoint these and considering it's going to be a small system as well i don't think this is a threat worth worrying and especially for the west australian coastline as well definitely not a threat worth worrying about what these systems tend to do though is create west coast troughs and as i well i've found tropical cyclones moving offshore from western australia they pull out the west coast trough further and further out when we've got this west coast trough that's situated offshore from wa it spikes the temperatures for perth and the southwest and that's going to happen right on christmas and a sneak peek into our christmas weather fall it's looking like a scorcher across the southwest of WA. Christmas Day itself could be up in towards 40 degrees for the Perth metro area. It could be approaching 42 degrees into parts of the weed belt. And you can see temperatures here up into the Murchison, Gascoigne, and even into the Pilbara region. No surprises, 44, 45 degrees now on the cards. And severe thunderstorms are also going to be a possibility. So it's going to be a warm, true summer's day across the southwest and that is because this tropical cyclone will drag that west coast trough offshore and that's likely to keep things stifling hot into the run up towards Christmas and I think it's safe to assume now that it's going to be a warm one across southwestern WA and just what we're talking about Christmas obviously wet in the north this includes the northern territory Queensland and of course western Australia we've got multiple areas of low pressure to be talking about including maybe potential proper tropical low pressure systems as well across WA and the northern territory convergence zonal type rainfall across southeastern Queensland should keep things Things wet or at least stormy and showers for the northeast of New South Wales but keeping things dry and cool with those southeasterly winds for parts of Victoria, southeastern Australia and New South Wales. Also for Tasmania we might have a bit of a cold front sweeping through and that could give us some much cooler temperatures down there. So cool in the southwest at uh, the southeast rather hot in the southeast and stormy and wet over in our north and northeast. Central Australia should remain pretty stock standard for this time of the year and that is our Christmas Day weather forecast right now weather briefing. I'll have some more information over on the Facebook page as we head out towards our Christmas period. But that is going to do it for today's weather forecast update. If you have enjoyed it, then please do consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And for more updates like this, and please do consider uh, checking over the Facebook page as well, link in the description. But that's going to do it for me today. A massive thank you to our channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not really show that. But as always, their support is massively appreciated. And I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.